So everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Sunny, your host, and today we are going to uh, see introduction to Python in this lecture. So these are the five points that I'm going to cover. That is, what is programming language? Why we should? Uh, what is Python? Then why we should use Python? Then what can be done with Python? And at the end, we will see the drawbacks as well. So if you are a beginner and starting for the first time, we are trying to do the coding for the first time or learn coding for the first time. So this video could be a good start for you. And if you are a person who is coming from a different programming language background, then still you can watch this. At least to understand that okay how python could be different from your language okay so let's get started so let's start with the first topic that is the what is programming language and in this topic we are going to just see that uh, first of all we will see the definition of programming language and then after that we will try to see what is the common thing between spoken language and programming language okay so we will see a simple analogy so let's start with the definition first so programming language is nothing but it is a way of communicating or instructing the pc slash computer to do some specific task so ultimately what we do in programming language as per the definition that we try to communicate okay or engage with your system or pc to instruct it to certain task okay so it could be anything like it could be uh, maybe copying files it could be some sort of image processing or anything so that's what programming language means okay as simple as that now let's try to understand that what is the analogy between the spoken language and the programming language so spoken language let's take an example here as english and then the programming language as python here or it could be any other programming language. I'm just taking one simple example just to make you understand. So let's try to see that. Okay, what is the first thing that is you can see here as common between English and the Python? So in case of spoken language, what we do, it's nothing but it's it's again it's some sort of a communication between human and human. Okay. So what we do is we somehow try to interact with some other human. So that's how we do communication. So that's the use of the spoken language. Now, in case of programming language, what happens? Here again we are doing communication only, but this time on the other end it will be a pc or a computer so here it will be human and pc or it could be a machine or whatever so that's the first thing that is common between them right and now in the second part let's try to understand this so when we try to speak okay so we try to speak by a certain rule so that rules are called as grammar okay so in case of english we have grammar with the help of that we try to speak correctly okay and if we do not follow grammar so obviously uh, the person in front of me will not be able to understand and my like whatever i'm trying to speak so grammar is there which is nothing but where we have defined some set of rules and when we try to speak so we use words okay so those words are nothing but they are you can call them as vocabulary so just like that in programming language what we have is syntaxes so syntaxes are nothing but these are again some set of rules okay and we also have keywords so just like vocab we have keywords and just like you can say an analogy to grammar will be syntaxes so if you write wrong syntaxes in programming language or if you do not follow the syntactical rule so what will happen it will throw an error or it will uh, the program will not run simple and while using those syntaxes we try to also use vocab and what vocab is called here in programming language we can call it as a keywords so that is the again there is some commonality or you can say analogy between grammar and or sorry spoken language and programming language next is in case of spoken language what happens so let's say if i have to maybe order food online okay or maybe if i have to communicate with my subordinates to perform certain tasks so what i will do is i will try to communicate with them so either i can shoot an email or maybe i can just simply call my colleague so in order to write email so what we are going to do we are going to write some sentences the sentences may contain some sort of instructions for them so their brain what they will do is so my colleague's brain or what my colleague will do is it will try to understand these sentences or instructions or other person will try to perform the task and similarly whatever they will respond to me and i will process their sentences or their instruction and i will try to perform some task so just like this okay just like this what happens in case of programming language we have compilers or interpreter so what they do is like they will take your piece of code in case of instead of sentences i will write here as the analogy will be code so they will take this code and they will try to convert this or try to understand this code and then what they will do is they will try to perform a task okay so this is 
again an analogy between your spoken language and programming language so i hope you have got the some basic understanding so programming language is nothing different it's just a way of communication if way of instructing your pc right to do your or to automate a task so in order to prove this also i have a video before this where i have shown uh, research is also uh, done on this just to prove that okay there is not a very huge difference between spoken language and programming language so learning a programming language is nothing but you are trying to learn some sort of a uh, spoken language only you can think of in that way so that's what i wanted to show you guys so now let's try to understand that what is python so python was first released in 1991 by guido von rossum now let's see its definition so python is nothing but an interpreted high level object oriented programming language so that is the core definition but also let me tell you that why python has become famous okay and what is the main aim behind creating it so the main aim behind creating python was or for which python is known for is improved readability and ease of use with a syntax that is designed to be clear and concise so this point also you will see when you will start learning python that it is very easy to read and understand the code that you see in front of you okay because of its syntax clear and concise syntax so earlier if you see the previous programming languages like c plus plus c java and other programming language so there the code readability is not that great as compared to python okay so that's why python also became famous because it was the person a normal person can also understand it very easily you will even see when you will start seeing the code that i write you will find there that it is kind of reading english only so that is also the main aim behind it okay so we have seen the definition here so it's an interpreted high level object oriented programming language now let's try to understand these three terms that is what is interpreted high level language and object oriented programming language so this will give us a brief idea about it and we will just see the overview of it okay we don't want to get dig deeper into it whether because otherwise we will deviate from the main topic of this uh, video okay so let's try to understand the first topic so let's try to understand that why python is called as interpreted language that is the first thing so in order to understand uh, what is interpreted language and why it is called as interpreted language we should also have an idea that what is compiled languages okay and how they work so let's get a high level overview that how they work so to in order to make you understand we let's say we have two files this is file one and file two where in them we have these lines of code and the red line represents the errors so let me write it for you here so we have interpreted here which will run this file and we have a compiler here which will run file number f2 now let's say both of them is having around 100 lines of code here also we have 100 lines now let's see that okay how both of them will be executed let's say we start executing file f1 so it will start from the top and as soon as i it encounters an error it will stop here but in case of compiler what happens that it will not stop at the first error it will go always till the end of the file okay, it will read each line and it will try to find out what are the errors and it will give you the errors at the end so this is e1 this is e2 so that is the major difference between these two so in interpreted it it tries to go line by line as soon as it get encounters with any of the errors it will stop it there as simple as that but in case of compiler it will always it will always go to the end of the file and it will find out all the errors and it will give you at once so both of these ways have their own advantage okay but uh, like as you can see that if you are developing any prototype so in case of interpreted you can develop it in a very iterative fashion that means let's say if you have 100 or 1000 lines of code so as soon as you get first error you can just rectify that and again rerun it and every time you rectify let's say if you rectified this error for the first pass and you forget let's say if you forget the other errors so what happens that once the file runs it will now go to the second part that is the second error and it will stop there so in that way you will remove the errors one by one and in case of compiled languages let's say you in the first pass you have like corrected this error but in the second but you forgot to correct the second or other errors but in each case whenever you will run the compiler will run all the hundred lines every time it will always go and check all the hundred lines and it will give you an errors but in case of interpreted language it will whenever it will encounter the first error it will throw error there and it will stop so in that way you will save some time right so if you are developing any prototype or a simple uh, like demo project or proof of concept projects so in that case python is helpful right or interpreted languages will be helpful so that's what the major difference between these two and i hope you have got and uh, got the idea that why python is called as interpreted language 
So let me also summarize it for you here. So Python is an interpreted language, which means it does not need to be compiled before running. Instead, it is executed line by line. And because of this, it has an advantage. Okay. So I will write it here due to that, due to which it becomes easier to debug and test code as errors are caught and reported as soon as they occur. Okay. So this was a complete summary of what I described here. Now let's try to understand the second part that why it is called as high level language. But before we jump in, so let me give you a very simple example so that it will clarify your understanding about high level languages. So I hope you can recognize this picture. Okay. So this is nothing but it's a simple joystick through which we try to enjoy our video games. So to play any game, we just have to understand how these control works, right? It doesn't matter that what the game is, who has developed the game, how complex is that game or how complex is the code written to let that game work. So it doesn't matter like how does it work. The only thing that matters is that what is the functionality of these buttons. So that's how we try to control our video games. It could be anything. So in a same way, like high level language means that I don't have to worry that how the internals of my computer works or I don't have to understand the low level languages. I can write the instruction for the uh, for developing any application in a simple, easy to understand language. Now let me give you another example here. So as we all know that in computers, ultimately they understand what they understand binary language, right? That is zeros and ones, but the computer hardware that understand zeros and ones or binary language, it does not understand my language or let's say English as of now. And as a programmer, I cannot write code in zeros and ones. It's not feasible at all, right? So earlier days, what people have developed is that let's say if this is an hardware, okay, this is my PC's hardware. So what they developed is that they, they have developed some languages like let's say assembly language, which were again short instructions, okay, which is which directly runs on hardware. So what happens like again, this assembly language is written in English, okay, there will be some certain keywords. So that gets converted into what that gets converted into hardware language that is binary. Okay, so this assembly language was also not very like feasible to write. So what people have developed is they have developed some languages like C++ or C, okay, or embedded C so that these languages will be directly compiled into this machine code. Okay, and it will be easier to run that code right on this hardware or to operate different parts of the hardware. But again, if you see the syntaxes of C language, it is still it is not, you know, user friendly, right? People still find difficulty to understand initially. So what people have developed is that they have developed some languages like high level languages and Python is one of them. So Python has, as, as I told you initially, that it is designed to be very simple, okay, or to, uh, to be very like clear and concise way. And you will observe that when I start coding into Python. Okay, so let's say here comes the Python. So just think in this way that the languages which is very closer to hardware or the languages which is very easy to like execute on a hardware or and closer to hardware or it can be directly run on hardware is called as low level languages which is closer to hardware and the languages which is more readable like python is called as high level languages because what happens we don't have to worry about that okay what is happening at the back end we just have to worry about the code that whatever we write and once it is get interpreted so what will happen it will be executed on the on your hardware right so python is nothing but it creates some sort of a abstraction layer just like this joystick it creates an abstraction level or a high level abstraction so let me give you one more example of high level abstraction so when we use our phone right so it has a user interface like where you click on the apps when you click on the apps and after that what do you do you either let's say if you're playing game on your phone or maybe you try to do some chatting and all those things so we what we do is like we play with the interface we just have to worry about that okay how that interface work how each icon what each icon will do what each option will do we just have to worry about that we don't have to worry that, okay how that application was made how that phone works that doesn't matter right so this user interface that you see is kind of a high level abstraction over the complex things right so in a similar way python is a high level language which is nothing but it's a high level abstraction over the more complex things that that runs at the back end. So that's why Python is called as high level languages. And you might have uh, heard me or anyone saying that I'm just giving you a high level overview. So what does this mean that I'm trying to hide the complexity just to make it simple. So in the same way, in order to make Python simple, people uh, developed it or Python was meant to be clear and concise. So that's what the high level language means. Okay, I hope I have made my points clear here.
So let me summarize it for you. Python is high level language HLL, which implies that it is closer to human language and easier to read, write and maintain code. Okay, so that's a quick summary. Now let's try to understand that why Python is called object oriented programming. So the answer lies in these two words that is object oriented. So what does it mean? So let's try to understand this word that is object. So object means that entity, it's an entity that exists in the real world and oriented means orientation or interest towards that entity. Now, let me give you an example to clarify this better. Let's take a simple example. Let's say if you are willing to purchase a land and let's say if you want to model this land in object oriented programming way. Now, let me clarify that also. So we all know that land will be having its width and it's going to have its length. So first of all, when you are going to purchase any land, so what you need is you need to know that what is the area because of based on that only you will pay the price. So so in order to calculate the area, we know that it is going to be width multiplied by length, right? And if I have to do the boundary of this field, so I need to know the perimeter, right? So perimeter of the rectangle will be is equals to two times width plus length, right? It's a simple formula. Now why I'm teaching you math here. So let's try to understand in a very simple way. So in terms of like object oriented programming, so what here object means is, so here the object in this example is the land that I want to purchase. And what is our orientation here or the interest is? our interested into is its geometric property what is the geometric property here it's nothing but it's your area and the perimeter and why we are interested into that because based on that only we will calculate the cost okay cost of purchasing that land and also the cost of creating a boundary across it right so you can see that here a real world scenario okay can be modeled into object oriented programming right so this will be this will become more clarified when we will talk about object oriented programming that is oops concept so at this point of time at least you might have got the overall idea that okay what that definition means, what is interpreted what is high level language and what object oriented programming means so these all three uh, features are already there into python so we will see this more practically and understand it better so this clears the definition of python so now let's try to understand that why we should learn python or why we can go for python so the first reason why we should go for python is because it is you can say it is widely used nowadays and accepted and it is widely being used in new into almost almost all the kind of domains okay it's not just restricted to any specific domain or or field so that is one thing it's a very versatile language actually in short you can also write here that it's a versatile language then second thing is that it is easiest to learn if you are coming from a different programming background so you will definitely appreciate the simplicity of python and if you are coming for the first time if you are first time learning any programming language then also it's the best language because it will be again you you will easily you will be able to pick up so it is simple and beginner friendly third is that third point it has a very strong community that means the number of users are more and because of that it will be easier for you to solve your doubts okay so that's also makes it easier to understand python why because you have many people to tell or discuss about your doubts right so one community that you can find it out on stack overflow it's a website i think most of you might be aware already but if not so this will be a go-to website for most of the developers where they try to find out the answers of their maybe errors or an issue they are having with the, their code in addition to this now we have chat gpt or bing ai or bing chat so these two will be a very good friend for you guys nowadays because whatever doubt you have these two can help you to solve it you don't need anyone so this will be your first you know go to place to solve your doubts about python then the fourth point i will say is in python you can do fast prototyping prototyping so prototyping means like if you are developing some simple app applications or uh, proof of concept that is POC that means before developing any uh, final product what we do is we try to check that if this area uh, this idea is going to work or not so in order to test that quickly so we can simply start coding into python and just convert our idea into code and see if it is going to perform the way you are expecting or not and that will help us to develop the or deliver the product faster right so fast prototyping will it's a key point in python because of which many people have adopted this language and the fifth part is it's a cross-platform language 
So cross-platform means that it can run on Linux operating system, Windows or Mac OS. So irrespective of uh, operating system, it can run anywhere. Okay. Only thing that you need is a Python interpreter there. That's all. So these are the five main points, which will, which is more than enough to start learning Python. And apart from that, as you all know that it's a very versatile language, so it can help you in almost anything, right? Uh, which you will see when I will start giving some more examples in when I will show you some coding examples. So that completes our third section that, okay, why should we go for Python? Now, since we have discussed the three points, now let's go to the fourth one. That is what can be done with Python. So now since uh, Python is a very versatile language, it has vast application. Okay. So let's see that, okay, what you can do with Python. So let's say we want to program and simple interface. Okay. For your uh, prototype. So you can use Python. So for graphical user interface, yes, you can use Python. Now, second option is, let's say if you are developing a small prototype for robotics. Okay. So there also we have, we can use use python one framework is robot operating system ross for this one okay where python can be used to code your applications for robotics next is let's say if you want to extract or download some data set from uh, or maybe data from online or uh, from any website so we can go for a technique called as web scrapping so this could be used to gather data for your projects next obviously in data science huge application widely accepted language in this domain data science next is cyber security so since it's easy to use and faster development process it's a very good uh, suitable language for cyber security next again is a database or let me call as data engineering again python can be used there as well where how to process da data or transform data and put it into usable form useful form so that's where also python can be used that's the core of data engineering even in data analysis or data analysts yes python can be used for database people or data database admins again python can be used then uh, let's talk about devops as well so if you want to manage your system and all if you want to automate certain process python is your choice so it is applicable in it is very useful in devops very good field devops again then we have uh, let's say if you want to do some sort of image processing yes you can use python there as well then uh, let's take one more example let's say internet of things very famous field and very uh, interesting field as well so there also we can use python to develop some applications so you can see there are so many uh, already i have listed so many and i might have also missed some or maybe multiples okay because python is such a versatile language that it is very hard to even uh, put all the fields here so i hope this is more than enough that okay what we can do with python even let's say if you want to automate your uh, own personal stuff yes you can use python let's say if you want to automate email for yourself you can do it automate sms yes you can do it and so on so there are almost i can say n number of applications of uh, python and uh, that's why it is even my favorite language and i i'm using it from last five six years so i hope that answers what can be done with python now we are left with the last part that is what are the drawbacks of python so let's try to discuss so the only major drawback that people talk about it or more often it comes into picture that is python is slow as compared to other languages like c plus plus java etc so this i will say it's it's a cost of being simple and easy to use and more human friendly so obviously that comes at a cost and that the cost is that your code may not be that fast okay as compared to the other languages so that is the only major drawback but again you will not feel that drawback until unless you write better you know efficient code so it's not going to be a major issue but still as compared to the speed yes python is slow so that's the only drawback that i would like to mention and rest you can definitely you can read it out later so guys that's all for this uh, introduction to python session i hope you liked it and uh, you have got a basic idea that okay what is python what are its use cases what are its drawbacks and so on in the next session onwards we will have more hands-on session so this is, I think, the only uh, last theoretical session. Okay. And now we will have more practical sessions. So see you all uh, in the next session. I hope all, you are, all of you are excited. And till then, keep on learning and keep on exploring. Thank you.